Kim. Yeah. Congratulations. A win here at Alexandra Palace. It wasn't a classic, but right now, I guess you don't care about that. Um, I actually do a bit. Um, I think it's one of the worst games I've ever played at Ali Pali, and uh, it, it hurts me um, because I was playing really good in the last couple of months, and I was feeling good. Practicing was going good with Mark St. Clair Marker. Um, but my game didn't reflect like my practicing was going at all. What's the last 48 hours been like not being able to get into the UK and your original travel plans all being turned upside down? What goes through your head at all that point and what's it been like? It was a nightmare, it was a nightmare. Um, I was handled like I was a gangster at the French border and I want to say to the French people over there that treated me like a gangster. I'm in England. Because <laughs> he just said like to me, he said, you're not going to the UK. And I said, well, I'm playing the World Championships. You're not going. I said, well, I am going. He said, nope, you're not going. <laughs> just physically just wouldn't let you. He just, he just said, you're not going to England. That's what he said. And I said, well, I'm playing the World Championships, so I am going. Doesn't matter how, but I am going. And he just said, you can phone Johnson or Macron, but you're not going to England. At that moment, does panic set in? Um, at that moment, there was a lot of words that I can't say on television. Um, and if uh, my friend would have been as calm as me, I would have been in prison probably by now. <laughs> that, like, just like that bad? Yeah, no, honestly, we, we were treated horrible, horrible at the border. I had to give my passport and um, he said, what's your business in England? So I said, I'm playing the World Championships. And he just said, no, you're not. And I said, I, I, honestly, my first thought was like, he's joking. And I went like, yeah, I am. And he went, no, you're not. <laughs> said, so what's the reason? And he, he wouldn't give me a reason. He said, you're not going to England. So I said, uh, okay, can I at least have my passport back? And he said, no, nope, you're not having your passport back. We had to wait in the queue. So we waited in the queue there and there was uh, people from customs there. So I asked a bit more information. They wouldn't give me any information. Then we was escorted outside the premises of the Euro tunnel. Um, and then we was handed our passport back and uh, without a saying they just said go away at that point were you worried that you were going to miss the words yeah yeah i was worried of course i'm worried um from me to london is about four hours five hours i drove two hours and a half i've done halfway and all of a sudden they say you have to go back so um then we i phoned my manager luckily i have a very good management they booked me a flight straight away uh, the flight was hour and a half delayed, <laughs> so I was thinking. I said to my my friends, "I just want to get to England. I just want to be there." So when we arrived, it even got worse because um, we waited three hours for our case at Heathrow. Yeah, exactly. When we landed, um, when we went to the luggage belt, um, there was an announcement, and they said it could be hour and a half, two hours until your baggage arrives. It's for every all the flights from the the whole Heathrow airport. So. I was like, ah, oh. so you look at the whole baggage hall and you see two, three thousand people there. So I'm thinking, okay, you know what? It's been a hell of a day, so we'll do this. After three hours, I phoned my management. I said, you know what? Get my luggage in the hotel. I'm going home. I'm go well, not home. I'm going to the hotel. I want to sleep. I left seven o'clock in the morning and twelve o'clock at night. I wasn't even in the hotel. Just at that point, at the airport with that many people in one place, are you worried about? Obviously, yeah. with what's going on in yeah. the world these days, yeah. many people in one space, that, yeah. that could then wreck the World Championship. 100% because they all say like, ah, oh, COVID this, COVID that, but there's so many people in that baggage hall. And then they say, you have to join the queue um, to get a paper for your luggage. I think, I reckon there was like 500 people in that queue. So I said to my friend, I'm not standing in that queue because there's so many people and everybody wanted the attention of the people working there. So I have a lot of respect for the people working at the airports because... They had so much yeah. <laughs> over them, um, and and uh, it was it was a horrible day. Honestly, I, I went to the hotel and I was in my bed and I was like, okay, my case is not here, but I'm in my bed. I'm in London. I am gonna play the World Championships because 12 hours before I wasn't even certain I was gonna play the World Championships. You've been doing this a long time. The worst preparation for a World Championship ever. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent the worst preparation ever. Um, the next five days is going to be the best preparation ever. <laughs> Speaking of that next five days, it's a tougher task. It's the world number one the yeah, yeah. champion, yeah. the Arshman. Yeah. I'm guessing that you're not going to be intimidated by him on stage because he likes to give it some... We're yeah, going to see some, oh. we're going to see some fireworks oh. in the back. Yeah, after that. 
this is gonna be a classic one. He's gonna give it. I'm gonna give it. It's gonna be a good game. Um, I just have to be there. I have to be prepared, um, and I will. I will prepare myself the best now ever. Um, I'm gonna practice. I think four, five, six hours a day. Um, but yeah, he likes to give it to Biggin, and I like to give it to Biggin. So I think we're gonna have a classic game up there. Kim, many congratulations and thank Cheers. you very much. Kim, just by the look on your face, it looks like the game against Gerwin's one you're really looking forward to. Ah, oh, that's the one I've been excited for. Yeah, I've got nothing to lose. Playing the world number one, um, the world champion, and I know in in the past we're good friends. We're good friends off the hockey, and we like to give each other some banter. And it's not going to be different now. Um, so I'm going to enjoy this game. I'm going to love it. Would beating Go and Price make everything work, worth it that you had to deal with at the? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this game, this winning this game makes it worth. Um, I've had a horrible time traveling up here, but uh, winning the first game obviously means the world because um, the first one is always the hardest. I think that's for everyone. Uh, I think you can see that at the level as well as now, uh, now in this game. Um, so I'm looking forward to the next game. Is it positive of having to stay here at Christmas that you're going to have that time to focus on your game? You say you're going to be on the board five, six hours a day. You've got to do that because there's not a whole much else you can do. No, no, no. Yeah, it's going to be pretty boring. Uh, I think my um, my Netflix and my uh, Disney Plus account is going to be ruined. Uh, I'm going to play FIFA a lot of times, football manager. But outside that, I'm going to practice a whole lot. So I'm going to look forward to the next days. OK, Christmas, um, not with your family. It's not the perfect time. But um, what better way to celebrate it than still being in the World Championships? Cheers. 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 Just one more before yeah. you go. Just, just a quick one. Just yeah. In the build-up to this, there was a lot of talk around who you potentially could have played. Were you glad it was Steve and not Fallon? Because no. Because everything that went with it? No. It honestly, it didn't matter to me. Um, and I, I predicted that Steve would win. Um, I, it's difficult and I'm going to get a lot of uh, responses to it, I think. But I think the fallon Sherrock hype is getting a bit too much, to be honest. She's really good and she, is, she's, she deserves where she's at the moment. But... There was no respect for Steve or for the next players at all. It was Sherrick against Govin Price in the third round and she was going to get Premier League and a tour card here. She's not unbeatable, you know. She's a very good player, but the hype is getting a bit too big, I think. In my honest opinion, um, let the girl be who she wants to be because she's got a whole lot of pressure now for uh, her tour card for Q School. And I think... Um, I think the media and everything is getting its getting too big for her as well. Just let her be Fallon Sherrick, let her play darts and do what she's good at. And um, the whole media circus is, is just let her play darts. It's That's good. That's great, Kim. Thank you very Can much. Thank you. Well, she might be. She might be. I think um, she's got a good chance with Sky. Does she deserve it? I don't think so. Because there's a whole lot of players that have done... Well, a lot of better tournaments, and they didn't, never got Premier League. Um, box office-wise, Premier League, PDC-wise, 100% she has to be in it. Tickets-wise, 100%. It's on a yeah, 100%. But for maybe the she, players... Maybe too soon in her career as well. Yeah. Just le let Fallon Sherrick be Fallon Sherrick now for the next couple of months. Stop the hype. Let her play the darts for Q School because it's an important tournament. Let her prepare. She's going to have a... L I think more media time in the next couple of weeks before Q School than she needs to. Just get thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks,